Hey, Amy here back with the fifth and final video from our cellular respiration chapter uh, in which we will look at the metabolic pool, catabolism, anabolism, how different products can enter or leave the different processes in cellular respiration. Okay, what things are used for energy when we look at the foods we eat, foods that are rich in energy? Okay, it's not just glucose, but there's other carbohydrates like starches that we might eat, uh, fats, proteins can be broken down for as well for energy. How is that done? Okay, uh, we split the reactions that take place in metabolism. Remember, metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that are happening in our bodies, in our cells. <clears throat> okay, degradative reactions are breaking down or degrading is are called catabolic or catabolism. Okay, I always remember that because I hate cats and I just want to break them all down. Okay, so I hate the cats, break down the cats. Uh, when you break things apart, uh, that tends to release energy. So most of the time, those are exergonic or energy releasing. Okay, uh, synthetic reactions, reactions that are building or putting things together are anabolic reactions. Okay, or anabolism. I remember that from anabolic steroids, okay, which is bad, but why do people take anabolic steroids to, to build up, to get bigger? Okay, Those tend to be endergonic because they are consuming energy. They are taking in energy. Okay, when we look at the metabolic pool, okay, so we just learned in the previous videos how glucose with oxygen is broken down in cellular respiration. Uh, to make energy in the form of ATP. But we also store energy as fats. Well, how are those fats then used to make ATP? Well, you remember a fat is, okay, typical triglyceride is a glycerol, okay, with these long fatty acid chains attached to them. Yeah, carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon bonds. Okay, so what happens is uh, the fats will break off the glycerol right here, which can enter into cellular respiration. And then these carbon chains are kind of chunked up down at a time, and I'll show you this on the next slide. And they're broken into smaller carbon chains uh, that can be put into the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, okay? In proteins, okay, in proteins, uh, amino acids break down into carbon chains and amino groups. Uh, these amino groups are removed called deamination, which occurs in the liver, uh, which makes poisonous ammonia, but that's quickly taken or converted to urea, which is filtered out by your kidneys to make urine, okay, which you get rid of then out of your body. Uh, the different R groups are processed differently depending if it's just a carbon chain or a carbon ring. Uh, different fragments can enter cell respiration at many different points. Okay, our metabolic pool, our pizza pie here that has many different energy sources on it. Uh, if you take maybe the sausage off or the pepperonis, which are protein, okay, you see the amino acids. The different parts of the amino acids might be broken into pyruvates or into acetyl groups or depending on some of the R groups, those chains might enter the citric acid cycle. Okay, carbohydrates are broken down into glucoses, which then go through. This is the normal pathway here that we just studied. Uh, fats, the glycerol, okay, will be changed into a pyruvate, which then can go through the prep reaction and into the citric acid. The fatty acids are broken off two carbons at a time, which are joined with a coenzyme A then to enter the citric acid cycle. Okay, so all of these different things, you know, the fats off of the grease from the pepperoni or the cheese, uh, the carbohydrates from the bread, all of these things can be used for energy in our body. So it's important to understand that we talk about glucose being broken down and made into ATP energy, but these other energy-rich sources can also be broken apart in different ways to also be broken down and be made into energy. Okay, all of these metabolic compounds are part of the metabolic pool. Okay, they make up uh, those things that are in our cells and different intermediates, different things from the breakdown of glucose can be snagged by the cell 
and be used to build things. Okay, so anabolism, which is synthetic or synthesis building up things. Okay, if your body wants to build carbohydrates or string together a bunch of them, uh, you'll start with the acetyl-CoA and basically reverses glycolysis, uh, but different enzymes, different pathway, and it can put them together to make glucose, <clears throat> which then can be strung together to make glycogen, which can be stored in our liver and then released into our blood as we need it, okay? Fats, the G3P, okay, which is a three-carbon substance, uh, can be made into the glycerol. Remember, I just drew this. And then the acetyl groups can be connected together to form those carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon bonds on the fatty acids. In proteins, okay, the another biomolecule, proteins, they are made up of 20 different amino acids. Okay, again, those amino acids can be built from some of those metabolic pools. Our bodies can make 11 out of the 20 we need. We need 20 different ones to build the thousands of proteins we need in our cells uh, for enzymes and structural purposes and all of the proteins. 11 of the 20 uh, can be made in our adult cells. Okay, we call these the non-essential amino acids because our body can make them. The other nine cannot be made, so they must be in our diet. So we call these the essential amino acids. Uh, and so that's why you, it's good to eat a variety of different foods so that we're getting all of those different amino acids from different places uh, that our body can use to make the proteins we need to survive, to live. Last little topic of the chapter is just comparing photosynthesis to cellular respiration, okay? And if you look at the organelles that we use for the two, okay, chloroplast for photosynthesis and the mitochondria for cellular respiration, okay? They both have inner outer membranes, okay? The inner membranes are folded up to make thylakoids in the chloroplast and in the mitochondria, they're folded up to make that wavy sort of cristae around the inside. Uh, they both have ETCs. Okay, it's either located on that thylakoid membrane or on the cristae membrane. Photosynthesis, the electrons got their energy from the sun. Okay, And were used to make some ATP. In mitochondria, those electrons from photosynthesis that were stored in glucose are then broken apart and used to make ATP. Okay, so the energy source is a little bit different. In both of them, you get that chemiosmotic phosphorylation, creating that grading of hydrogen ions uh, that they then escape through the ATP since they spin phosphorylate ADP into ATP. Okay, the enzymes, again, the enzyme, you have cycles in each of them. In photosynthesis, that was the Calvin cycle, which is happening in that liquidy stroma part of the chloroplast. And in mitochondria, you had the matrix, uh, which is where the citric acid or the Krebs cycle was happening. So a lot of similarities. And again, we can go back and revisit the endosymbiotic theory about how these little organelles maybe were once their own little prokaryotes were engulfed by a bigger prokaryote or an early eukaryote and were kind of kept alive as an organelle and have really uh, developed these specific functions in eukaryotic cells. Also, back to bio two, it's important to remember energy flows. Okay, there's a flow of energy through ecosystems. Okay, starting with the sun into the chloroplasts, okay, in the autotrophs or the producers, okay, whether that's plants or algae or cyanobacteria, phytoplankton, okay, that are producing carbohydrates, which are then used by the plants or animals or other things that are eating them into the mitochondria and then to ATP and used for cell processes. Okay, this flow of, of energy helps com combat entropy, which is that tendency towards disorder, randomness. Uh, this constant input of the sun helps maintain that biological organization. Uh, remember the second law of thermodynamics with each energy transformation, uh, some of it is lost as heat. 
okay? And where does that heat go? Lost as heat goes into the air, into the atmosphere, into space. How much heat can space hold? A lot, okay? And so as we keep getting bombarded by the sun, uh, we keep capturing that energy, and then it keeps passing through the ecosystems, and it loses a little bit along the way. Uh, remember, about 10% is passed on. Remember, energy pyramids from bio 2, and about 90% is lost as heat, okay? Now, compare that to chemicals. Chemicals cycle within the natural systems. Okay, so chloroplasts that produce the oxygen and the carbohydrates, okay, the O2 and the C6H12O6, they are then taken and used by the mitochondria, which release the CO2 and waters. And those, that carbon, that oxygen, the carbon dioxide, it keeps cycling. Okay, the chemicals are not lost forever. They cycle back and forth into the atmosphere and into carbohydrates and then back into the air. Okay, so energy flows through an ecosystem, the chemicals cycle. Last slide here, just kind of showing the two organelles. Okay, the chloroplast up here and the mitochondria down here and the two processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Okay, here water is being split, okay, in giving off oxygen. Here the oxygen is picking up the electrons, okay, and turning back into water. So again, uh, we talk about these processes being reduction oxidation reactions or redox reactions, okay? And over here, the CO2 is, or here water is oxidized into oxygen and CO2 is reduced into, okay, we're adding in electrons, it's reduced into a carbohydrate. Okay, down here, oxygen is going to be reduced into water and the carbohydrate is oxidized into CO2. And so here the electrons are being picked up. Here the electrons are being dropped off. And again, structural wise, you see the inner outer membranes. And it's just interesting to see our flow of energy okay, from the sun, okay, from the sun into the sugar, and from the sugar into ATP, and then eventually out into the atmosphere, and then eventually space, where it's lost forever. Okay, so we need that constant. And this is true of all ecosystems. There's a few that do not. For example, hydrothermal vents, uh, where you have chemiosmosis taking place with the hot, hot hydrogen sulfide compounds bubbling out of the earth. There are some bacteria that can reduce use those electrons to reduce bicarbonate ions in the ocean into, carbo into carbohydrates. But for the most part here on Earth, we're dependent upon that input of sunlight energy to maintain our homeostasis, to maintain that high level of biological organization. Okay, so that wraps up kind of our energy chapters. Uh, again, write down any questions you might have and be sure to ask me in class or review and rewatch these videos. Otherwise, uh, chapter eight, this is Hammy, out. <laughs>